For the first time since 1997, the Miami Heat have made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, and it's a sea of red at American Airlines Arena in downtown Miami, as they like to say here. They're in the red zone, red being the primary color of the Heat, and they've been red hot here at home, winning 24 in the last 25, including four of four in the postseason. But tonight, Miami will face the defending NBA champion, Detroit Pistons, fresh off a tough six-game series victory over the Indiana Pacers. That's the setting for game one for Miami. Wayne Wade, who comes off a sensational series in the four-game sweep of Washington. Damon Jones bothered by that bruised heel. And up front, Shaquille O'Neal. Udonis Haslam playing with an injured finger on the left hand. And Eddie Jones, who has... Uh, been solid and well, he goes to the bench four for four good rhythm no fouls so the rest of the game is really set up well for Sam Van Gundy and Alonzo Morton able to put it down which makes his start that much more remarkable four for four from the field and a block defensively so look very sharp out there there is Wade, Wade. Wade. on their feet here in Miami Good run by the Heat to move within one. Here's Wade twisting the score. Wayne coming in, averaging just under 29 a game in his previous eight postseason contests. Able to get inside. So 10 points. Making the extra pass and then knocking down that three. Six of eight tonight. Rasheed Wallace has been terrific. Wade with a nice move on Prince. That time he had Prince wheeling backward off stride for the first time tonight. And he just... O'Neal played by Wallace with some help from Hunter. Here's Wade to the crossover. Wade to the reverse. Oh. It's a... Now Wade trying to use a screen to the left hand. Oh, beautiful move by Dwayne Wade. That is stunning. stunning. Butler off the mark. And the Detroit Pistons have won the game one of this Eastern Conference Final Series. Miami over the last five minutes and eight seconds with only one point. They went 0 for 7 from the field. Rip Hamilton with some big buckets down the stretch. Finished with 16. Dwayne Wade, 7 of 25, 16 points. Shaquille O'Neal hit his first four shots. The Pistons led by as many as 14. The Heat made a run, tied the score at 80 with about five minutes remaining. And then Detroit outscored Miami 10-1 down the stretch. Here's Wade to the left hand. The night that he was going so quickly that he didn't have the balance that he so well exhibits during the course of games. He had to make him defend down on the block, something he's not used to doing. That wears him out a little bit at the offensive end. Here is Wade able to penetrate. We did not see that frequently the other night. Looking more from Udonis Haslam, who had a superb regular season and played very well in the regular season against the Pistons. Nice look. Shaq gives Miami a two-point lead. Doug King. Shaquille O'Neal off to a great start here, and you talked about the rhythm of Dwayne Wade. When your point guard is in... Coming up on four minutes remaining in this first quarter, here is Wade, and gets the hop. Those are those kinds, when you've got a 7 for 25 night, and that ball drops in like that, it's like... Uh, interestingly enough, Stan Van Gundy told us that when Shaq and Zoe were on the floor together in game one, they struggled defensively. Shaq getting the slam from Wade. But he felt that they got beat on the boards. Hamilton coming up short. He forced it. Here's the outlet from O'Neal. Wade ahead of the field. And this time, Lindsey Hunter with those long arms could not. Well, Dwayne, good offensive stats for you personally, but the theme at yesterday's practice, the message on the board was defensive intensity. Tell us what you're doing here tonight. Uh, we just we just got our intensity all the way up on all cylinders. Um, if they're going to make shots, make them make tough shots. But the, the main thing for us is get the ball off the glass and go with it. I know you look at a lot of tape. People talked about the sense of urgency. How desperate did you feel coming into this game tonight? Uh, very desperate. I mean, we lost the first game at home, uh, our first loss of the uh, postseason. So, you know, we got to win this game. This is a this is a game we, we have to win at home, and we're going to come out in the second half and bring the same intensity. All right, thanks a lot. Score at halftime. They double up on O'Neal. Shaq finding way. 
What a feed from Shaquille O'Neal. Miami's lead is 10. They've led by as many as 14. Wade with the crossover. Wade in traffic. Wade scores! What a difference a game makes for this young guy. We'll get you back quickly, but the defense only 15 points. Marvel, look at the third quarter. Everything goes in favor of the Detroit Pistons. This is the biggest 12 minutes in Miami Heat season. They cannot go down 0-2 and expect to go to Detroit and get out of this hole. This is a huge moment for them in their season. An 11-1 run by the Pistons to end the quarter. Wayne Way right back. So Miami, Leitner. Played well by Leitner. Leitner's giving him some nice minutes tonight. Wade finding the opening. Now that's the Dwayne Wade that this crowd has seen all season long. Recovered by O'Neal. Shot clock down to two. Down to one. Jack. And the tip. 26 for Dwayne Wade. The will. Shot clock running down for Miami just a moment ago. O'Neal was able to get it off, and Wade puts it home. What a display by Dwayne Wade tonight. We talked earlier about his 7 for 25 shooting performance in game one, and he settled so often for long jump shots. Look what he's done tonight. 14 points in the paint. He's gone to the line eight times. Remember, just two attempts the other night, and I think a big reason for this, Doug, Miami's defense has improved so much. They've been able to get him in the open floor a little bit, giving him a few more angles from which to attack. Doug. Go in there to him, let him kick it out, and then repost deeper. That's what he's done so well throughout his career. Wade, yes, you have a good look. Come straight away. Wade met by Phillips. Wade splits through. Oh. And score! <laughs> Miami takes a one-point lead. It's, they're able to pull that game out. How about Detroit with eight of their last nine field goals coming from three-point range? Wade, yes. And Wade, Wade has tied the game. That's respond. I mean, this young guy has put on some kind of show. In the middle of the floor, he pulls up and hits the jumper. How about this drive? The balance, he hangs. The left-handed degree of difficulty goes in. And then Damon Jones. He says, if I keep this in the building, this guy will finish it. Oh. And he does. What a play. It has been a magnificent bounce back performance by Dwayne Wade, who has scored the last 10 points for the Heat. And in this fourth quarter, he has scored 14 of Miami's 16 points. And I realize this is an unsponsored Steve Wonders, but I'm wondering, can we see that again? Look at that <laughs> slam. He's about two feet above the rim. Again, from underneath, look at that elevation. He's playing on adrenaline and energy right now. That so often we talk about great players bouncing back. In the fourth. Reed Wallace. Ben Wallace rejected by Gordon. There's Wade chased by Hamilton. You saw the speed of. There is Phillips. Miami does not want to foul. Prince for three. Played by Wade, and that will rub it. That's the way it should be. He should put a wrap on it tonight because he's been the whole package. He might as well tie it up. 40 points. For Dwayne Wade. The series is even at one as they head back to Detroit. Dwayne Wade with a sensational performance coming off the 7 of 25 in game one. 40 points, 20 of the 40 in the fourth quarter, 15 of 28 from the field, 10 of 10 at the line, eight rebounds, and six assists. Shaquille O'Neal, 17 and 10. Detroit led by Rip Hamilton with 21, although he did not 
shoot well. Let's go to Craig with Dwayne Wade. Well, Dwayne Wade took the blame for the first loss in game one on Monday night, but bounced back with a sensational 40-point effort. Talk to us about how you prepare for this game mentally. Um, you know, I just watched a lot of film. I listened to a lot of people. And came out tonight and used everything that all my coaches, my high school coach, my college coach, and my NBA coach told me to do. What did they tell you to do? They told me that every time I have a bad game, I always come back with a good game. And go look at the film and see what, uh, how Detroit played me, and that's what I did. What did you learn from the film? Uh, I learned that I took some bad shots. I was resting some shots. I wasn't being patient. And tonight, I just tried to come out and be patient and be more aggressive. We also know Pat Riley had a big input in yesterday's practice. He talked to you about Michael Jordan, his first conference finals, nine for 31 in a game against the Knicks. He bounced back. What did it mean to have Pat Riley come and give you advice? You know, anytime Coach Riley come and say a word to me, you know, I take that for what is worth. One of the greatest coaches to ever come and say something to me. And it meant a lot. It meant that, forget that he, all he was saying was forget that game. Even the great ones had it. So come back the next game and win game two. The Pistons came back, took the lead in the fourth quarter. Everybody Everybody in this arena is tense. Talk about the unbelievable dunk you had on the facet of the basket. Uh, you know, I mean, this is a great team. They're never going to give up. And we know that. Uh, everybody's on the edge of their seats. But uh, Shaq called me last night about 3.45 and told me, you know, go hard. This team ain't going to never, never give up. Play to the, uh, to the whistle end. And that's what I try to do tonight. You woke you up at 3.45 in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> well, you listen to them. The three days off now to game three on Sunday. Do that help Shaq? Yeah, we help them a lot. They help all our guys. So we're looking forward to it. We got to go up to Detroit in a hostile environment, and we're trying to get one. We're trying to get some rest tonight. I will. Great game. Now back to you, Mark. All right, thanks, Craig. You guys ever get inspirational calls at 345 in the morning from teammates? <laughs> Steve called me last night, and I looked yes. on the phone, and it was him, and I didn't answer. <laughs> Playoff beat goes on on TNT as the Eastern Conference Finals continue with the help of the Detroit Drummer Boys. We are at the Palace of Auburn Hills. The series tied 1-1 on the strength of Dwayne Wade's 40 points for Miami in Game 2. This is the 80th consecutive sellout. Better than 22,000 turning out at the Palace of Auburn Hills as the scene has shifted from South Florida to the Motor City. Tonight, here on TNT, it's game three of the Eastern Conference Final between the Miami Heat and the defending NBA champion Detroit Pistons with the series tied at one. Back comes Damon Jones. Lead pass for Dwayne Wade. Oh. Damon Jones. Whoa. Days off. He said he's still playing in pain, but trying to figure out some way not to jump off of that right calf. But he will not play with that patch wrap that he had. And you expect Eddie Jones maybe to score a little bit, maybe Damon Jones, but Shaquille O'Neal and Wade are the two weapons. These are the shots that he has to knock down. And Wayne Wade has just checked back in. Able to O'Neal, Butler, and Leitner up front. Jack has been having a field day against Rasheed Wallace. Here's Wayne taking to the rim. Well, when you close out on him, you're going to make a decision. Are you going to look so much more active down on the block? He looks like that rest has really paid off. And now Detroit is forced to come. You see Prince come down, and all of a sudden, Wade's got an open driving lane. Where their Achilles heel been, they're 7 of 14 from the free throw line. They've missed seven free throws here early in this game. Wade, yes. Wayne Wade. Wade showing us the jump shot. Boy, you just don't see Rip Hamilton miss those open shots like that. After you start missing a few, you start losing a little confidence. This guy hasn't lost confidence. He's six for nine. Shaq is seven for eight, so they are third. They will do anything. <laughs> well, I think he regrets those comments, and it, he knows that he probably didn't make many friends here in the Detroit area. He tried to clarify it by saying, it, really, I'm talking about a handful of people. The majority of the fans here are fine as Wade knocks down the 20-footer. And back comes Wade. Miami in possession. They lead by five. Wade with a beautiful move around Prince and then was able to protect it against Ben Wallace. By Detroit, Wayne Wade with 18, 12 of the 18 over the last five minutes. By Haslam. Wade for Haslam. Now Haslam needs to have a jump shot go down for him. This guy's on 
lock, lock and cruise control. He's got Marv, how about this for efficiency? Let's At least he know who I am. You know what? I don't know. Dumber. Dumber. That's your boss, no, TK. He wanted that up there. I have no idea who the hell he is. <laughs> Buckets from Damon Jones, Udonis Haslam, and Eddie Jones. That's gravy. I mean, they've been relying on the big fella and Wade, but if they can get everybody else involved, look out. And Dwayne Wade with yet another successful jumper. O'Neal comes out to set the high pick. Here's Shaq. Dwayne Wade on the follow. Points for Dwayne Wade along with seven rebounds. Well, Miami has softened this Detroit defense up with penetration, with ball movement, and that's what happens. You create good offensive rebounding lanes when you have good offensive rhythm. And Just under three to play, and the fourth. Wade to the fade. Oh, yes! My. And oh. the shot clock buzzer. Wayne, you take it, you fade back, you hit an incredible shot. Say, boy, what a great play I just ran. <laughs> Time now for the overall fantastic finish. Our subject, Wayne Wade, 2004 playoffs, first round game one. Wayne is a rookie, making an immediate impact in his first career playoff game with a game-winning jumper to beat the Hornets, 81-79. Miami won game one and would eventually beat the Hornets in seven. And as a follow-up to the 40-point outburst in game two, 30 points for Wade, 12 for 21, seven rebounds, couple of assists, did most of his damage in the first half, but a moment ago hit a huge bucket. And well, we yeah, that will conclude it. The Miami Heat in the postseason, five for five on the road. They won two in New Jersey, two in Washington, and they win the first road game of this series and they have taken a two games to one lead in this Eastern Conference final series led by the combination of Wayne Wade Shaquille O'Neal and Eddie Jones 36 for Wade coming off the 40 points the other night Shaq at 24 Eddie Jones with 19 let's go to Craig with Wayne Wade and Shaquille O'Neal well, Shaq and Dwayne Wade combining for 60 points, 10 more than Doug Collins said you guys needed for a victory. Game one, you score 81 points at home and lose. Tonight, you come up and score 112. Why have you how have been able to solve this defense of Detroit? Because I'm playing with the best player in the world in Dwayne Wade. He listens, he's young, he's humble. This morning, he told me that, uh, you know, they may go to the Packer Shack, so if they fire you there in the second half, I'm going to need you to hit all your free throws. So, you know, we... You know, we're uh, learning to, you know, play with each other. I think it's my job to make him the best player in the world. And right now, he's playing the best in the playoffs. And as long as he keeps playing like that, we should go pretty far. Before game two, Shaq called you at 3.45 in the morning, gave you advice. Now you're giving him advice. Did you call him at 3.45 in the morning? No, nah, you know, I told him before the game. Uh, we really need him. He know we need him. And uh, this was when we needed him most, on the road, in a hostile environment. And he stepped up big for us. He hit big free throws down the stretch. And, I mean, that's the kind of play he is, and it was a great win for us. Our announcers were saying that it felt at times when you're free throw shooting, you're like a golfer that drives the green, but then three putts. But tonight, you're one putting. <laughs> How about the confidence, the fact you made him down the stretch when you needed to? I'm not really tired to worry about percentages, but I know when my team hits him, most of the time I'll, you know, step up. You know, tonight, you know, they needed him. We needed him, so I just stepped up, took my time, and hit him. You got a lot of rest. Obviously, you're strong in the second half. How do you feel now with having to come back every other game? It doesn't matter how I feel. I'm here with the guys. I'm going to just go out and give 40%, because that's what I am now. But, you know, I'm going to just keep playing. You know, the guys stuck up for me long enough. And it's getting better. It's getting better. You get a dunk or a fast break. You heard Magic Johnson talking about it in the pregame. Get out and run in the open court. Wade with a pullback to the fadeaway. Oh, and that's his first shot attempt. He might create the best space gets inside and Wade showing the quick hands here's Wade yes and the foul so Dwayne Wade as we take it back to the first game of the series goes 7 for 25 bounces back with 40 points doing it for the most part in the paint game 3 36 and he does it with the jump shot. He's come out here, and he's hit his first two from the perimeter. And I think that's what's scary if you're a Pistons fan, the fact that his 
first two shots were both fadeaways from the foul line area. He hasn't gotten an easy one yet. This is his first trip to the free throw line, and yet he's already knocking down that shot. There's Wade to the left hand. I think he's going to continue to drive to the basket with Troy with a 12 point advantage. Wade. Yes. Oh, what a move. Once again, creating the space on the fade. That's Here is Wade. Yes. <laughs> so Dwayne Wade. Well, he's trying to go too quickly again. A little bit what he did in game one where he shot seven for 25. Slow yourself down. Use your strength over Lindsey Hunter. You can't beat him with your quickness. So now it's Hamilton and Phillips who have been together since 2002 and they won a title last season. Handled by O'Neill. Wade on the run. Wade to the rim. Yes, and the foul. What speed. Dwayne Wade accelerating against Lindsey Hunter. Hunter call for the foul. That's his third, and Wade will go to the line. That looked like the Indy 500. Two race cars. Yes. Look at these two guys so fast, and then the strength of Dwayne Wade to be able to finish the play. They were talking to Tayshawn Prince the other day about guarding Dwayne Wade as opposed to guarding Kobe Bryant last year in the NBA Finals. And he said that the difference is this guy's so much faster that his speed really bothers Prince. So when speed, when uh, Prince backs off of him. He takes that and makes up that distance on him, and it's a nightmare trying to cover. With Kobe, he could give him a little space and then be able to get that hand up and bother his shot. There's Wade. Phillips let him go. Did not want to pick up a foul. Down. Now, the rule is if the ball has not left the player's hand, it cannot be goaltending. Wade knocks down the jumper, but seven assists on 37 field goals and only six turnovers. This is a big bounce back game for them, Marv, especially after the way they ended game number three, the way they sort of melted down, lost their poise, all the talk about distractions. There were no distractions tonight. They came out and played a great basketball game. They're going to have to do the same thing. They got to find a way to get one in Miami, again, if they're going to advance in this series. On a 75 degree rainy night in South Florida, this series has shifted back to American Airlines Arena in downtown Miami. A capacity crowd better than 20,000 making their way in for game five of the Eastern Conference Final, matching the defending NBA champion Detroit Pistons and the Miami Heat with the series even at two. And on a catch and shoot. Wade saw the opening, able to spin and score! What a move by Wade. He gives you that fourth three. Rebounded by Wade. Quick hand by Dwayne Wade. They get to the ball. One of the rare times he's brought it up court, and then he shoots the jumper. Well, at what point that flex does, it swings the ball from one side to the other. And here is Wade for O'Neal. Well, that's improvisation by, by Dwayne Wade. Who and the Pistons coming with a pressure defense here at the start of the third quarter. Wade whipping by Rasheed Wallace. Question is, will he, will he cut it off and right. say it's not going to happen or it is going to happen? Or, that one, I don't think that'll occur, but Wayne Wade is able to... Outstanding performance by the Heat. And they are hearing the cheers from this crowd. Miami with an 88-76 victory. They have taken game five. They shoot 52% from the field. Steve, I know you, you love these percentages. Game five winner goes on to win 84% of the time. We discussed that at the uh, start of the telecast. However, what about the other 16%? Yeah, that's right. And let's not forget, Detroit last year was down 3-2 to New Jersey. Lost game five, came back and won the last two. Okay. Uh, can you just kind of take us through what happened and, and what you're feeling right now in terms of the injury? Uh, well, right now I'm just feeling pain. Um, you know, I just made a quick move on a, uh, on a crossover. 
And uh, I guess I pulled the muscle by doing that. So, you know, it's just pain right now, um, and I expect that. So hopefully um, I feel better in the, in the morning. So did you you try to continue playing? Is that what happened? Stan said you, you made a couple trips up and down the court and decided you couldn't play through it? Or yeah, uh, you know, I tried to come back. I mean, because you know, we got a lot of guys on our team that's playing through a lot. Um, so, you know, I tried to come back and, and see if I get out there and, and get going that it'll feel better. But, you know, it, I couldn't, and I didn't want to make it any worse. And I had confidence that my team can get this victory, and um, they did. Because he was back in the locker room working with a massage therapist. He is now entering the court for the first time. The last two days, a lot of electrostimulation, ultrasound, massage, whirlpool, and ice. I specifically asked the medical staff, has he been given an injection of any painkiller or muscle relaxer? The answer is no. It is an injury, an intercostal muscle strain that is unusual in basketball, but is very common in hockey. Two prominent NHL doctors were consulted. Their opinion, yes, an injection might ease the pain a little bit, but in no way would help heal the injury. So Dwayne Wade, back in the back room for the past couple of hours, stretching, trying to keep it warm. He will start, and he will make it a go tonight. On the 6th day of June, this is the first time in the 17-year history of the Miami Heat that they are still playing in the month of June, and they're hoping to continue playing, although the Pistons have other ideas. On an 83-degree day of sunshine in South Florida, a capacity crowd, better than 20,000, are making their way into American Airlines Arena for Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final between the defending NBA champion, Detroit Pistons, and the Miami Heat. They're even at three games apiece. The winner tonight will face the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA Finals. Four different cities to get the Game 7 in your building, and it's a shame this man is not going to be 100%. You see his numbers in the wins. They have been terrific. But Shaquille O'Neal says just having him on the floor will give us a calming effect We'll have to see how well he can play. And Pressure is having four kids to feed and no job. Back to you, Mark. That kind of puts it into perspective. Here's the audio for Shaquille O'Neal. Wade Wade with the lob. Miami leads 15-9. That's seven points off turnovers from Miami. Brett's leading Rasheed Wallace. He lost it. And you can see Wade in deliberate fashion moving it across. Shoots the jumper. Moments ago, it was Wayne Wade pulling up for the jumper over Keyshawn Prince. Miami by four. Ball game, it missed two shots, had a couple turnovers, posted him up, and he just used his height over Hazard. Wayne Wade, as you say, looking out there. Yes, and it comes. So Wade successfully posting up. And he will go to the foul line. He was hit by Hamilton. Mark, before we went to timeout, we were talking. I said the previous possession was the most active I'd seen him on the post. He had been guarded by Chauncey Billups on the other side of the floor. You see him. He's starting to feel better. Played Magic tonight in Game 7. Played a lot in the first half. But as Steve Kerr was pointing out, this is... He's going half speed against a very good defense. What do you think of what he was able to provide? Well, Steve was right, but I think what he has to do, Ernie, is really look to be the setup man. And Udonis Haslam came away with it. There's Wade. He moving in very deliberate fashion, trying to back his way on Hamilton, and then hits the turnaround. I think he's going to be much better in the second half. I think he got that out of his system. I think he have offensive rebounding opportunities. I don't know if anybody does it better than Detroit. They double up on Wade. Goes to the crossover and scores! Wayne Wade with a beautiful move. He threw the double team. And somehow was able to slice his way in. And I this Rasheed Wallace has, he is some kind of spectacular offensive player when he gets it going. Seven feet tall with long arms, and he shoots the ball above his head, so it's almost impossible to block. Wade with the hesitation move and gets the roll. And I thought you called it. He's looking better and better. 22 to go in this third quarter. Beautiful move. 
by Wade. 16 for Dwayne Wade. Well, Detroit with a five-point lead, and Dwayne Wade has come to life here in this third period. He's not missed a shot. Three of three from the floor, two of two from the line. First possession of the half, he steps back over Rip Hamilton, buries a jumper. Now you're seeing the more aggressive Dwayne Wade, the little contortionist move in the lane, the twisting and the turning we did not see in the first half. Once again, that little hesitation, the high arcing shot off the backboard. The kind row, eight points in the quarter. He's given his team a nice lift, and we see Pat Riley there, Marv, and uh, yesterday he worked out Dwayne Wade, and he talked to him about, you know, if you're going to play, you can't be making faces and wincing and playing in pain. You've got to suck it up. You cannot let's see the piss and see that you're hurting. Wade with the lob for O'Neal. After the injury, he started to feel sorry for himself, and then he started to get mad. And he said that a combination of anger and endorphins can probably get Dwayne Wade through this game. Marv? Well, here's Wade with a finger roll from 10 feet away. Marv, you said earlier that this shot. Yes. There aren't many questions at this point. You know, it happens so often, though. I know the Spurs have talked about that with Manu Ginobili. Greg Popovich said, you know, we drafted the guy in the second round. We thought he might be pretty good. We had no idea he'd be this good. Same thing with Dwayne Wade. Otherwise, five teams wouldn't have passed on him in the draft. Look at that little floater up and over Tayshaun Prince. And, of course, the Pistons were one of those teams that passed on him. That's that's why the draft is such an inexact science and you see guys slip down in the draft and other guys go higher you work guys out you work guys out and you think you know you know a little bit about what they can do but I remember Michael Jordan told me one time he said you know you don't judge a thoroughbred with a watch you judge him in a race and that's when you really see what guys are all about when you put that competitor out against them and you can see Dwayne Wade is an incredible worker and just keeps getting better and better. Wade is four of four from the field in this third quarter. He has 10 of Miami's 18 points here in the third. Detroit is led by as many as 10. Pistons now lead by two. Here's Wade taking all the way. And the game is tied at 60. Come on. This is amazing. And it was Wade who was able to draw the foul for Prince, his third. The ball back to the Heat. Timeout call. Just under three to go in this third quarter. The game is tied at 60 off a 6-0 run by Miami. It is game seven of the Eastern Conference Final on TNT. He hasn't made a shot here tonight. I don't know if that's going to be the case. I'd like to see them get something going to the basket, a little penetration, then maybe a kick out for a three. They, they got to get a quick score here, Marv. They're out of timeouts, and they got a foul, and they got to hope Detroit misses one or two of the free throws. But if you're Detroit, you don't foul, and you switch everything so you don't give up an open three. Steve Smith checks in for the first time tonight, played briefly in game six, first appearance in this series. Detroit was trailing by six with seven minutes to play. They've gone on a 16-6 run since then. Miami needing a quick bucket right here. Wade and O'Neal comes into a two-point lead. 12 with about three seconds. They zipper Wade up to the top of the floor and on penetration, Wallace is going to come over and help and just floats it over to Shaq for the easy score. Shaq, 27 points and get him the ball. The Detroit Pistons coming from behind in the final minutes have defeated the Miami Heat 88 to 82 in game seven of the Eastern Conference Final. Larry Brown and his Pistons will head to the finals where they'll meet up with the San Antonio Spurs. Rip. We understand Dwayne Wade is making his way to the podium next, and we see him right there. What a story for Billups. Started in Boston, then to Toronto, Denver, Minnesota, and big time in Detroit. Let's listen to Dwayne Wade. Dwayne, can you just take us through the game and how the injury felt? Did it get better? Did it get worse? How you felt throughout the game? You know, well, you know, first of all, uh, you know, I just want to say, um, Thank you to the city of Miami for supporting us all season. Um, 
you know, being great fans. Uh, we appreciate it. And, um, you know, the game, you know, it was, it was what this matchup should have been. It went seven games. It went down to the last couple seconds. Um, they made plays at the end, you know, that we didn't make. Um, and, you know, it was the main thing, you know, my injury, you know, anybody in my position, you know, would have did the same thing. It came out and, 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 and tried to, try to get it out. And that's what I try to do. Uh, Dwayne, Stan said that you took a, an injection. Can you, can you tell us when you did that and how you felt trying to get going in, in, at the start of the game? Uh, I mean, yeah, I took one uh, you know, before the game. You know, just trying to do whatever I can if I can be out there with a great group of guys. Uh, you know, if I can if keep guys confidence you know even if i wasn't going to be playing at a high level i just wanted to get guys confidence that i was going to be there with them every step of the way and um i think i did that for the most part um so like i said anybody you know would have did it you know whether it was taking a shot or whatever it is